Yeah, it was like, and, and I saw him. I saw him the last thing just as he went over the hill, and I knew he was. I knew he was a big deer, mm. and um, came back to camp. And I was, I was telling my dad, we, we were, I pulled him aside. I remember his plain as day. I says, "You ain't gonna believe the deer I saw today." Welcome back to another episode of Northwoods Whitetails. I'm your host, Joey Davis, with co-host Isaac Young. And we're sitting here with Beaver Dragon and Brent Dragon. How are we doing, guys? You're doing good. Good. Real good. So, little backstory. Why don't you guys tell us about a uh, little, little about yourself real quick. Where are you from? What you do? Uh, well, I live in Milton, Vermont. <laughs> I uh, have all my life. I've lived here for 75 years, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I raced race cars for 42 years uh, and hunted when I wasn't racing race car most of the time. And, and I just lived to hunt. Mm -hmm. And I've never shot a 200-inch deer, but... Uh, keep trying <laughs> and I've come close but not close enough yep. <laughs> and I've been all over the country uh, my son and I we went to Montana for 13 years in a row out there and we shot some nice bucks out there uh, we've been to Kansas we've been to Iowa we've been to Ohio we you name it we've been there and Saskatchewan Alberta but uh I've had a lot of fun doing what I've done, and and uh, I got a few of these on the wall that I've shot, but I still don't have the 200-inch deer. I think a few is an uh, understatement. He, well, to say the least. <laughs> there's there's yeah. they're close, but not close enough. There's gotta be and, 60 heads in here. 50? Yeah, I think it's about 75. Oh. I think. Wow, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I think it's somewhere pretty, like that. But anyways, pretty impressive. But I've had fun doing what I did, and and I can't wait to get going again this year uh, back when i was younger i used to do some tracking and stuff tried to and uh, i didn't mount too much but uh i chased a lot of deer around and you know, once in a while you know i'd i they'd make a mistake and i'd get one but uh uh as you get older you can't do that and i'm 80 going on 83 years old and uh, harder every day yeah but anyways brent tells me you know that uh well we went 10 miles today we went 15 miles oh jesus i couldn't do that i couldn't i couldn't go that far in a week <laughs> now but i used to so but he's he's it's, the hunter yeah. he's shot a lot of deer too yeah we've been pretty lucky we've got to go around the country a lot of different places and when when he was off when he was off in Saskatchewan and Alberta, he did a lot of that. I was back here in Milton, um, and, and I pretty much really got involved. Um, we went to the Benoit's house one time, and it sort of set me off as far as I, I wanted to learn how to track a deer. So I, I pretty much did that on my, on my own. Um, I can remember he was in Saskatchewan one year, and there was a buck here just not very far up the road. Um, I bow hunted. It was a 10 pointer, which we don't have many 10 pointers. Yeah, right. And I missed him at 20 yards with my bow. I was shaking so bad. And <laughs> I, I, I never had a deer that close that big. <laughs> and uh, I was some discouraged. Um, and uh, we, we got into the winter um, and we had a snow. It was a Thanksgiving day. And I had to be to Thanksgiving dinner by four o'clock, is what my wife had told me. Be there for four o'clock. And, um, uh, I took off and went up the road, and there's a swamp that this deer used to hang around. And got into it and found his track, and I took him, and we went. We ended up in the next town, came all the way back, and we. I probably was within a half mile of my truck, and I left. I left his track, and I cut him. I made a circle out around him, um, and just lucky, we came face to face at the top of the hill, and I. I shot him. Um, and that deer was over 200. I think it was 207, if I remember right. Wow. Yeah, for a Chittenden County deer, that was a that was a big deal. Ten points. Yep. Um, Especially and, uh, for around here. For around yeah. here. That's yeah. a really good deer. Yeah. It was. <clears throat> um, 
and uh, I that's that's where I got hooked on it, and that was probably I'm I'm guessing that was probably in the 90, 96, 97 time frame. Did you make yeah. it to Thanksgiving dinner? Maybe a little. I did. I did in time. Oh. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I, I didn't have to drag fire. It was, and it was all downhill. So perfect. Not yeah. Perfect. It was uh, pretty easy. But and that's you, where I got hooked into it. You've got that deer mounted, right? I do. Yeah. 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 He yeah, would I did, make I, a Vermont buck too. He's. Yeah. It was. Um, I figured that wasn't going to get many more shots at ten pointers in Vermont. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. You uh, shot another nice Vermont buck around here, though, too. Yeah. A real I, nice one. I got an eight-pointer. Yeah. Um, that was over 200. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, he had long tines. Uh, the 10-pointer was was very short-tined. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was uh, that was another another one that was basically on the opposite side of town. Yeah. Um, and uh, that one, it was on dry ground. Yeah. Um, just yeah. sort of happened to stumble across him, knew he was there. Yeah. And uh, walked right onto him, and that was the end of that one. Oh, well, mm-hmm. you Perfect. can't kill the big ones if you're not with them. Not mm, on the right woods right. with them. That's no. true. That's true. Yep. The yep. biggest one I ever shot, I shot with Jim Shockey, the guy that's on television. I hunted three times with him in Saskatchewan, and I learned a lot about their operation. They had two different hunting camps. One was a north camp, and one was a south camp. Well, I'd been going to the north camp. Yeah, I saw deer. But I didn't see, you know, the deer that they were seeing in the South Camp. Well, a friend of mine, Ramo Pizzagalli, was, at one time, he was an investor for Jim Shockey to get Jim, Jim Shockey started. And to get what he wanted out of it, he took it in hunts with, with Shockey. Mm. So <clears throat> he went three, four times, and, and he learned a lot. Of course, they put him in the best places there was. Well, it, this oh, it was well quite a while ago now. But anyways, I said to, I was talking to Remo one day, and I said, you know, I said I want to go back. I want to go back and hunt with Shockey again, you know. And he says, well, he says I can fix you up. And he says uh, that's not a problem. He said I can fix you up, and it won't cost you nothing. I said, what do you mean it won't cost me nothing? He said, well, he says uh, he owes me some credits, and he says I'm not going back. But he says, I want you to know that you're not going to go to the north camp. He said, you're going to hunt in the south camp. And I said, well, what's the difference? A lot of difference. He said, the north camp shot out. Mm. And he says, the the south camp isn't. And he says, I'm going to call right now, and we're going to get hold of the guy we need to talk to. It won't be shocky, but he says it will. I'll we'll talk to the right guy. So he calls this guy and he gets him on the phone and he says, "I got this guy that's going to come in my place, and he wants to shoot a deer, and but he says you're going to take him to the south camp." Yes, he says, "I will, Mister Pizzagalli." He says, "I'll take him to the south camp." So we get there, we get fly up there get driven to the camp, which is like four hours from the airport. And unbeknown to me, Greg Ritz was going to hunt with Shockey that week too. And I didn't know Greg Ritz. He owns Thompson Center in Rochester, New Hampshire. And we all get to the camp, and it's 40 below zero, whatever it was. It was cold. And we all get out of the car, and and first thing Ritz says, he says, uh, we need to— we need to shoot our guns. He said, we've been flying. And he said, we don't know how they got thrown around. And he said, we're going to shoot our guns. And I had just barely bought a brand new Thompson Sutter Katahdin. And that's what Ritz had. So we, I said, yeah, I'd like to shoot mine too. And so anyways, Ritz gets his gun out and I get mine out. And all of us, the whole bunch of us that were there, we all decided we're going to shoot 100 yards. Oh, well, Ritz stands up there offhand. Boom. Dead center. Oh, I said, that's a pretty good shooter at 100 yards <laughs> with a muzzleloader. Yep. And I had this muzzleloader I just bought, and after the second shot, you couldn't load it because mm-hmm. I was using wrong powder and all this stuff. It was corroding it all up. Well, anyways, he says to the guy that was in charge of the target, he says, uh, put it, put a target up 200 yards. And I said, he ain't going to shoot 200 yards, is he? Yeah. Pulls up like that. Boom. Dead center. 
I didn't want to shoot after that. I, I, don't, I don't need to shoot. My gun's fine. <laughs> but I did. And so I said to him, I said, Greg, we need to talk. When we get inside, he said, we'll talk. I said, okay. So we get inside, and he, he said, I'm going to ask you some questions. And he said, I want you to write this all down. I said, okay. I said, I just bought a brand new Katahdin. And I said, after the second shot, I have an awful job to load it because it's corroded up so bad. Yeah. He says, I know what your problem is. He says, you're using probably pellets. I said, I am. He said, they're junk. He said, they're no good. He, I said, well, what do I use? Blackhorn 209. I said, I've never heard of it. He said, you can buy it anywhere. That's okay. Mm-hmm. So I wrote down 209. Loose powder. What year was this, do you think? Oh, my God. This was 15 years ago. Right. So you were oh. way ahead of the curve then. Oh, it, it was, lo- it was well, longer it, than 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was yeah. longer than 15? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. It yeah. was? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. My, we, my we, point is Blackhorn has just become very popular within like the last five Five yeah, years, maybe. Yeah, and oh, even more so. longer than that. Well, well no, but no. Pa- wasn't it? Pa- who Pirate, just, Pirate X, Pirate X just bought them, right? Yeah. 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 Well, anyways, yeah. anyways, uh, he says, write down 209 loose powder, uh, pi- uh, 209 blackhorn powder. I said, okay. So I said, now what do I shoot for bullets? He said, well, what were you shooting? I said, I was shooting, I was shooting uh, uh, the... Power the, belts? Oh, uh, the... When Thompson you, Center, or yeah. Thompson Center Super Glides, mm-hmm. but they were two hundred and seventy-five grain. He says there's nothing wrong with that bullet, but he says I want you to switch to three hundred grain. And I looked at him. I said, Greg. I said they're going to drop. Mm-hmm. No, they're not going to drop. Listen to me. He said, mm-hmm. Okay. So I write down three hundred. I said, How many grains of powder? He says a hundred and twenty grains of of loose powder. It's okay. So. Uh, I said, what about primers now? He said, well, he says, I want you to use uh, shotgun uh, magnum primers. Okay. And he says, uh, you won't have a problem loading your gun. I said, I don't believe that. And I didn't know what I was talking about. Well, anyways, so I, sh- I, I shot a deer. I don't know if he shot what I don't remember. But anyways, I came home and he said, you can shoot... As many shots as you want, and it will not corrode up, and you'll be able to load it just like you did the first shot. I said, I'm going to find out. So I went over to my friends over here, Ed Robinson's farm. I shot 32 times right in a row. I loaded it 32 times, and it loaded just as easy the 32nd time as it did the the first time. No Mm -hmm. kidding. And I wouldn't go away from that powder for mm. anything. I've yep. shot mm-hmm. a lot of deer with that mm. little gun. Yep. Yep. And it was all just knowing what to use the right stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. You still have that gun. Oh, I still have that gun. Yes, I do. Yep. That's like your favorite muzzleloader still. It's, my, it's the only muzzleloader I got now. I sold the other ones. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. When you were with Shockey, did you, uh, h- how did you do? I mean, you. The, that, that deer right there is the biggest deer that's in, it was in this year. In the, wow, it was three hundred and four pounds dressed. <laughs> no kidding. But look at the horns. Yeah, yep. he got hit by a car, and they knew that. Huh. Yep. And they said the horns <laughs> are screwed up. And if you see him, you shoot him because we want him out of there. I rattled him in the first day. No kidding. And he would dress three hundred four. They put him on the brochure of their of their on their book up wow. there. Wow. Yeah. What did they drag him by hand to get him out of there? They no, no, we could, on no, him they, or something? they had me in a tent, yeah. and they came in with a one of them side by side things. Yeah, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we we picked him right up. He dropped her on the pile when I shot him. No kidding. And and uh, uh, we took him down and we set him all up. They wanted to set him all up with bales of hay and stuff like mm-hmm. that to yeah. take the pictures for their book. Yeah. And they did. They put him on, but. I wish I'd never shot him. I mean, he's only a ten, a ten point, but he's. I can tell you, there's not a lot of people that can say they killed a buck over three hundred pounds. Not many. He dressed three hundred and four pounds, and that's, they knew it. That's it huge. You could tell it when he walked in. I knew right off that was just, a deer. He was so big. Yeah. <laughs> Even but in that country, that is huge. It is huge. huge. Yes, it is. Just it is. Giant, huh? mm-hmm. The Did rest you? of them. No, I've shot some two hundreds of over two hundreds, but not like that thing. Yeah. So did you ever see any great big racks when you were up there? Oh, my God. The last time I was there, the last time I was in Saskatchewan, I got there, and uh, my guide 
we talked with the guide and stuff, and he says, I, I got a place for you. He says, we're 13 miles from here. He said, we're going to be going by four-wheeler thir uh, 13 and a half miles tomorrow morning, and tomorrow night I'm going to pick you up, and you're going to ride out 13 and a half miles. It's okay. And it was 30 plus below zero. What what is what is this country like? Is it like Ontario? What 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 is Saskatchewan? A lot like, like it's some like Ontario, uh, not as swampy. Yeah. Uh, big woods, yeah. big woods. A lot of beaver. There's some beaver ponds, that, but they're, everything's froze solid, so you can ride right across. I mean, okay. that cold. Huh. But anyways, he had this stand. It was thirteen and a half miles in there, and we get to the stand the first day, and he says to me, he says, uh, when when you come out tonight, I want you to leave your gun in the tree. We were just in a tree with some canvas around. That's all we had. I had a suit that was good for 100 below, and a good thing I did because I had a froze to death. But anyways, uh, he said, I want you to leave your gun in the tree tonight. And I said, no, no, I'm bringing my gun out. He said, ain't nobody going to come in here and steal it, not 13 miles. And I said, I know that. But I said, no, I'm going to leave. I'm going to. Bring it out. So I did all week long. I'd put it in a, a soft case, put it on the back of the four wheeler, and we'd ride out. So they went along the whole week, and I passed <coughs> bucks up all week long. And there was one nice eight pointer that was, he was a nice eight pointer. And I kept passing him up, passing him up. And I said, No, I'm not going to shoot him. Maybe the last day I might shoot him. Well, it came down to Friday night, and I was going to be getting on the airplane Saturday afternoon. He said, I, I'm going to take you uh, Friday night. He says, uh, uh, I'll come get you. And he says, uh, hopefully you got one by then. And, uh, yeah, I probably will have. Well, I did it. Well, that Friday night, I could hear the four-wheeler way off in the distance coming to pick me up. And it was starting to get dark. And they had a they had a pile of grain and stuff out about 80, 90 yards in front of me. And I'd seen tons of deer, a lot of deer. But nothing I wanted to shoot. So uh, I'm putting my gun in the soft case, getting ready, thinking, well, he's going to be here in a minute and pick me up. It's dark now, and he's getting closer, and I can see the lights coming through the woods. And he has to go by the bait pile to get to me. And he drives up to the bait pile, toward the bait pile, and he stops. And I didn't pay any attention. I knew he was down there. I said, well, must be he's must be he's going to bait rebate the pile well he sat there and he sat there and finally he come up through and he says to me he says uh why didn't you shoot that deer i said shoot what deer he says i had my lights right on the biggest deer i've seen he says for 20 years he said down on that bait pile tonight he said he was right there and i put my lights on him so you'd shoot him I said, well, I saw a deer come in, but it was dark before you even got there. And I couldn't tell if it had horns or not. It was too dark. He said, this thing is huge. And he says, tomorrow's your last day. I said, yeah, it is. He says, uh, you want to go another place? I got, I got some other stands where you can go and shoot a buck. I said, no. I said, I'll come back here. He says, okay. And I said, I'll tell you what. I said, by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, I'll have a deer. How do you know that? I said, I know, there's an eight-pointer here I would shoot tomorrow. And so he says, uh, you're sure? I said, yeah. I said, okay. So he drops me off in the dark and the next morning, Saturday morning, and I, I left it with him. I said, if you don't hear from me by 11 o'clock, come get me. But I said, by 9 o'clock, I'll have a deer. Ten minutes to nine, I got two bucks down on the pile. One's a spike horn. He'd been there all week long, and he could flop. Any mm. big deer, tip him <laughs> over just like nothing. How he did it, I don't know. And he wasn't scared of nobody. He was on the pile, and there was a five-pointer on the pile with him. And all of a sudden, they picked their heads up, and they looked like that, and they both shot right out of there. I said, something big has got to be coming. So I stuck my gun out through the canvas and waited in came that same deer from the night before. Oh, my God. If it, well over 200, that's all I can say is it is well over 200 inches. So I let him get up to the pile. He calmed down. He starts feeding. And I said, well, this is going to be easy. 
boom, I shoot, and no sign of hitting him. He just whirls and he's gone where he come from. Boy, I said, I don't understand this. So I get down and I go over by the pile and I can't find any blood. Of course, it looks like a barnyard. There's been so many deer there. And I, I can't find any blood. So I went in the direction that he went and then I started making circles, big circles. Never found no blood. So I called the outfitter. And I said, I just shot at that deer that I think you saw last night. And I said, there ain't no way I missed it. But I said, I can't find him. I'll be right out, he says, and we'll find him. Well, it hit, being right out was like three quarters of an hour before he got there. So I kept looking for him some more, and I didn't find him. So I went back by the pile, looked to see if I could find where my bullet hit, and I couldn't see that either. So I said, I might as well go get back to the stand. So I Walk back to the stand, which is 90 yards away. Get up in the stand. I no more than sit down, and I look at the pile, and there's an eight-pointer standing on the pile. I said, he had to have been standing there watching me. And I thought mm -hmm. it, you know, I was all wound up about that big one, and I, I said, that's got to be the same one. So I said, if I missed the first one, I shot over him, so I'm going to shoot under this guy and see what happens. So I shot for the very bottom of his belly. I broke his back. And mm -hmm. down it went. And so I get down, I go over there. It's not even the same eight-pointer. So it's a smaller one. It was a nice eight-pointer, but it wasn't a nice eight-pointer. So I get over there. And I, oh, Jesus. Now, what am I going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> so pretty soon I hear him coming. And he gets over there. And he says, oh, he said, you found your deer. I said, no. I said, well, what's that deer? I said, I shot him after after I, <laughs> after I talked my to gun you, was. you can't shoot too, he said. <laughs> I said, I don't think I shot too. He said, what do you mean? I said, I don't think I hit the first one. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to find out. So he looks around, and finally he finds my bullet hole, long ways in the pile. And uh, he went looking for the deer, and he's, oh, you didn't hit that deer, I guess. <laughs> so... He says, you remember what I told you the first day to about leaving your gun in the tree? Mm -hmm. I said, yes, I do. He said, we're going to take your gun, and we're going to shoot it, and we're going to find out if it was you or the gun. Okay. And so we put a target up at 40 yards. I missed it by that much over no, the top of it. Mm -hmm. The gun was, the scope was not just about off the gun. Oh. Riding. Pounding for 13 yeah. miles yeah, every they, day. Yeah, I should have listened, but I did it, and it cost me a big deer. No kidding, huh? Yeah. Now you went to Brent. You went to Saskatchewan or Alberta? Or one Alberta. Of those, didn't you? Yeah, I did. did I went. I, I went to Alberta. I went to Saskatchewan. We hunted with the uh, Indians up there. Did you was, see a great yeah. big one or something? I up did there? in Alberta. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, it was like what he was saying. Um, we. It was. I was walking down this pipeline, and um, the, this deer comes out, and he was. I mean, he. I. I'm guessing he's a 180 inch deer. I don't know. He's just bigger than anything I'd ever seen. Yeah. And um, he came out two days in a row in this same spot. <clears throat> so I. Um, I. I got the idea that the next day I'm gonna go down there, and there's no stand. Then you're the guy. Just or the guy just drops me off, and I was walking into this place. Yeah, and he had no idea that I would be down there, so I went down that afternoon. I made a, a brush blind down there, and the next morning he dropped me off. I got down there, and that deer came out right under the stand that I'd been sitting in the two days <laughs> oh, before. That's the way yeah. it always and, happens. Yeah. yeah, and he was. I and I, I never got a shot at him. So while we're on this two hundred inch uh, topic, um, I'm gonna switch gears away from killing him with a gun. And uh, you had an instance when you were bow hunting Kansas. With a mm. two hundred inch, yeah. You yeah. wanna you wanna describe that a little bit? What what <laughs> took place and uh... the very first year that um, my dad he'd been to uh, Kansas the year before, and he says we gotta go out we gotta go out um, bow hunting, and uh, I never I had never been out of into any place like this. <clears throat> when he showed up out in Kansas, we were we got this guy. He gave us the property. He said just go do your own thing. You just set it up and. I brought my clamp on stand, and I was like, I, "This is not going to be fun for two weeks." All, all, the, all there is is fields and little baby strips of woods, and I yeah. was like, "I don't like this." 
and I'll, I'll never forget it. The first day I, I went and I found an oak tree on the side of this brook and I put a put a clamp on stand there and got it all set up and we had three, four hours before it was dark and we were gonna he was gonna pick me up that night. And uh, I'm sitting there and pretty discouraged because I was like, I can't do this for two weeks. It, it, just sit here and not see anything. And uh, you swear there's not a deer around. And um, all of a sudden it got to be like uh, maybe maybe 45 minutes before dark. And I'll, I'll look out into this all the CRP grass, and it was like they boiled up out of the grass. Yeah. There, there had to be 30 deer wow. in this field, and they're all over the place. And this 10-pointer, all of a sudden this 10-pointer was chasing a doe, and he brought her right by me, and I I wanted, I really wanted that 10-pointer bad, and uh, I, I got ready, I drew back, and just as he stopped, he, all of a sudden he took off again after, and I drew back three times on the deer, and I never got a chance to, um, to uh, get a shot at him, and he was starting to go away from me over this little knoll, and on the way out, we stopped at a Cabela's, and I bought this, this, never knew much about it. It was a snort wheeze. It, it, you know, mm-hmm. I was like, what the heck? I'm, I grab it out of my backpack, and I'm reading the instructions on it, <laughs> and I blow this thing. And that deer and that doe took off out of there like a shot. I mean, they were like, and I was like, that is the biggest piece of shit. <laughs> 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 Why did I buy this? Yep. And yeah. all of a sudden, on the other side of the brook, I hear this crashing coming. And I look down in the brook, and this deer is coming across. And he 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 heard that, and he was sure this was his area. Yeah, he came up, and he got he got ninety yards from me, and he got to within twenty yards, and there was a, a little rushy tree and i practiced drawing on the deer that you know that came through there so i knew i was ready and this the stand was rattling so much from me shaking (laughs) i i cannot believe this deer and this deer is he's i would dare say he was a 200 inch deer and after later here i'll tell you why i believe that um the deer got to that brush and all he had to do is take one more step i drawn back and he stopped, and he put his head out in front of that brush, and all I could see were those antlers. And he finally took that step, and I never was looking through the the, the <laughs> you know. And I I didn't even have the pin on. I I let the arrow go, and it went so fast. I mean, I was sure it went right through him, and he took off on a dead run and out of sight. And sat there and sat there, and I could see the arrow light it, lit up down at the bottom, and. Probably forty five minutes later, half hour later, I got out of the stand and there went out a drop of blood on it. Oh dang. And I mean, I was soaked from the adrenaline of, of oh, that deer. I believe it. <clears throat> and come to find out we were hunting where I had the stand, the property that it was butted up against was a guy that had shot like eight two hundred inch deer that had his own uh food plots at this time. This was back had to be I had to be fifteen, yeah. 15, 18 years ago. Yeah. I remember it, you talking about it and saying that it was just oh. 100% buck fever that you oh, missed. And no I question. Think, tell them about the one you got in the soybean field with your muzzle loader that you snuck oh, up. Oh, that was, that was in Kansas. Yeah, that I was, was in Kansas. That was in Kansas, yeah. yeah. That was, uh, we were, we were um, same, out there. You were in the same tree, weren't you? Or, no, 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 this was a, com- this was a completely different area. I remember area. the tree you were in. Yeah. This was a different area. We, um, actually, June was with me. Yeah, and we she had, was. We had two. Uh, I'd set up two uh, clamp-on stands. Your Ju- June is your wife. My wife. Okay. Yep. And um, we we were sort of hunting together, so it, could, it was sort of new to her. And um, we had a couple of big bucks coming in to that place. And this was this was muzzle loading. So early September. Early Mid- September. Hot. Yeah. And um, we'd we'd been there for four or five days, and um, I just happened to look out in the soybean field behind me. And the soybean field was, it was three miles across it and a mile uh, long. Wow. And I just happened, just happened to look out and I saw something shine and I had binoculars. I grabbed them out of my pack and I look out and it's, it's, it's a nice box. I guess it was. He's, he's walking out across it and he got into the middle of this field and I watched him lay right down. And the only thing that saved me was... The hill across, right in line from where the stand was I was in, I, I mean, like, I'm talking five miles away, there was a dead tree on that hill, and he was dead in line with that. Wow. And these soybeans were, oh, they were waist high or they're, higher. Yeah. 
and uh and oh, it was you could 90 see degrees. The tip, of his, tip of his antlers when he laid down. When he laid down, I could see the tip of his antlers, yeah. so I had an idea where he was. Was he out of velvet yet? He just come out of velvet because okay. I'd seen I had him on camera the day before in velvet. Okay. Um, so I told you, and I says we only had one day, two days <laughs> left to go. I was like, I'm I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to see if I can. Yep. I don't know if I can sneak up on him or not. And the wind was blowing just enough, and I I went down and I got downwind of him and came back at him. And snuck through these beans, and I got, and I'm like, I know he's right, he's right here somewhere. And I looked maybe 50 yards ahead of me, and I could see a spot that was open in the soybeans where mm-hmm. it had been packed down. Yep. I said, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak. I got down, and I crawled on my hands and knees, and I got within, I was within five feet of him. Yeah. He, he never got, out, never got out of no. his bed. Really, and, you were that close to him, and oh, we, yeah. I mean, the barrel was within, within almost touching, with almost touching him when I shot him. Yeah, wow. He had no idea I was there, no. but the, the the soybeans were like squeaky with the wind. The they were like squeaky, mm-hmm. and he you couldn't he, I couldn't hear. Yeah, and and it was I mean the wind was in my face, and he, I mean walked right to him, and he, I mean just. I mean, he looked so big. Oh, when he, he was big. He was a big deer. He was yeah, a big he deer. was. He just <laughs> laid there, and he he never knew what had hit him. It yeah. was 90-some-odd degrees that day, yeah. too. Yeah, we wow. had to drag him across that bean yeah. field out of those beans. Oh, that took was a job. hours and huh. hours. It oh did. Gosh. Huh. But, but that was a that was a pretty pretty yep. neat hunt, that one. Huh. That sounds it. Yep. Now, that, that big one that you talked about in the previous story, was that a typical or non-typical? That was a typical. He was a two hundred oh, inch typical. He he. Was, I'm telling you, I've never. I I. Okay. I mean, I've seen a pretty good deer, but I mean, it it, it shook me. I mean, that right. stand was wow. rattling so bad. I my knees. I, I tried to put my <laughs> oh, knees. Yeah. I tried to put my knees against the tree. Oh yeah. And it was just like someone yep. hitting him with a ball peen hammer. Yeah. Oh. You know, it was. I couldn't stop it. Oh, yeah. I'm glad I asked because a 200 inch typical is like I, a, a unicorn. It, it, it's like yeah, a, yeah, it's like yeah, a 300 yeah. inch non typical. It, right? it, it had horn. I mean, there was just as perfect as could be, and yep. wide, and just yep. heavy. And I'll never forget it. Uh-huh. I'll never forget it. It's it's funny. We you, I hear a lot of these podcasts that you guys do. Yeah. Um, and it's true. There's the deer that you remember the most are the ones that you don't get. You don't get. Yeah. You yep. know. That's yep. Uh, yep. there's there's one in Tupper Lake. I, the last year up in Maine, there was a deer that bothered me. It's, it still bothers me. Let's <laughs> talk about that one in Maine last year. What happened there? Uh, I choked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you 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 cut his track and yeah, I I got up there uh, up in Maine. I had never I had never been into this area other than we drove through it in the summer, yep. and I sort of said, oh, this is a pretty nice spot and. Uh, took off thanks the uh, day before Thanksgiving, drove up there, parked and started down this logging trail. I don't know mile, mile and a half, and all of a sudden this deer tra- nice track come across and it's like, well, oh, here we go. Nice, Pick. nice track as in. Yeah, I mean he was a two hundred pound deer yeah. easily, yeah. and uh, picked up the track and took off with him, and we went and we made we made quite a few circles. He was with the doe, yep, and it was in some really thick thick stuff mm-hmm. and you couldn't see far and i i knew i was getting close to him i mean this was only a, a couple of hours after i picked the track up but i knew he was right there because right. there's no way that doe was out of there right and i poked my head out of this opening and the doe she's 50 yards from me and she is looking right at me and i turn and look and he is right right beside me broadside in oh. the brush and nice i mean beautiful deer mm. and I uh, I picked up and shot, and when I shot, he went in the air, and he took off and down through the brush, and I shot a couple more times at him. Yep. And uh, got all uh, loaded back up and went over there, and there was hair everywhere. And I followed that deer all day and never found a drop of blood, yep. never found a drop of blood. And at 4 o'clock that afternoon, we were back within 50 yards of where I shot him, and I saw him again, but he was it was he was with the doe and he was running. Mm. And I never got another show. I went back the next day and followed him all day oh. and never saw him again. And he kind of lined out that day, right? Yes. The, and I remember you showing day. yeah, showing yeah. me your onyx yeah. track of like where you were, and you were not in a big acreage no. at all. And he was just in circling. there with that doe. He's circling. Yeah. 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 That yeah. doe was that doe was ready and he wasn't leaving her. Yeah. Yeah. And that night he went to the top of the mountain. 
Um, and he spent the night up there, and then that Did next or evening or, or that morning, or early morning, he was gone, and we just yeah. went straight line. Uh, he was headed somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, dang, but, that, that hurts. That hurt. That really oh. hurt. And it and it, I mean, I'll tell you the story. It's it's sort of funny. Um, in Vermont, uh, what was it? This first day, second second day of Vermont season, I was hunting an area in Vermont, and um, I first day. First, first day. First day. It was. It was yeah. the first day. I yep. was. I was hunting this area three miles back in dry ground and going through a, a clear cut, and all of a sudden a deer jumped and I saw antlers and I was like, shoot, or I, he's going to be gone. I, I shot twice and I saw the ass go right over the top of him. And I got over there, and it was ended up being a four pointer. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, what are you gonna so, do? So yeah, yeah. Right. and I mean it was shoot or not shoot. Yep. yep. And. I honestly bl- blame the deer in Maine. What happened in Maine right. is I hesitated yep. because I didn't want to make that mistake because the year before I tracked when the second to last day of Vermont season muzzle loading, only two days left, and I shot the wrong deer. Yep. <laughs> and then so, saw the right deer. And then saw the right deer dragging him out. He <laughs> laid oh, down 50 man. yards from me, laying down there. Yeah. With beautiful antlers. No idea I was there. Oh, and yeah. I'm dragging this three pointer that day. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so, wow. so that's, uh, it's, yeah, uh, but that's what it's about. And, yeah. Uh, what it's, was, what was, what was worse of a drag? That three miles out of that bean field in Kansas or the three and a half miles? The, the three and a half miles off the uh, hill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a that was a long drag. First yeah. day of Vermont season. Dry, uh, and, dry, and yeah. f- probably drugged that hide right off. Him, did oh you? yeah, yeah. yeah. Joey yeah. got to me about the last what quarter mile you yeah, got perfect. there. Yeah, I got a good son <laughs> son in law <laughs> award. That yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. Yeah, it was. I was done at that point. <laughs> yeah, but I paid him back and uh, I helped him out in um, Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. That was a yeah. that was a drag too. Yeah. Good dragon buddies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, or I had a similar occasion out in kansas uh uh iowa i was at timber Ghost ranch hunting with them one year and they put me in a spot the first thing in the morning at daylight you're dark i put me in in the dark and they said you sit here till nine o'clock and then you go through that patch of woods and you're going to come to a soybean field and there's a ladder stand in that soybean field and he said there's a nice buck over there i said okay so nine o'clock, I get up and I walk through the woods and I get over to that thing and the wind's blowing and I climb up in that stand and the stand's going back and forth, back and forth. And about, oh, I don't know, about 11 o'clock, <coughs> I would say 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, out come nine doe, nose to tail. And then here comes this buck he's talking about. It was a 12 point and it's 180 inch deer. And they're too far for me to shoot with a muzzleloader. They're way down below me in the soybean, and right behind me is this river. There's a river. And I knew they weren't going to swim that river. They were just looking for a place to lay down. So they go into the woods below me, and about 11 o'clock, 11.30, and I sat right there to the rest of the day waiting for them to come out. Four o'clock, out comes the nine doe. They come out, and they come right up in front of me into the soybean field, and they start feeding me. Where is this buck? Where is this buck? Well, about 15 minutes later, here he comes, and he's coming right to me, and he comes up into comes up in front of me. It was 104 yards to him from where I was sitting. And the wind is blowing, and you're hanging on, and the stand's going back and forth, and I... I aimed the best I could thinking well this is I still get him well I shot and I hit him and I knew I hit him and he went this way and all the nine doe went that way and just the other side of the soybean field was all these whips where they'd cut this off and he went into that and I couldn't see him and it was starting to get dark so I got down I went over there where I shot and there was blood everywhere and I said, well, he ain't going to go far. So I, I started into the woods, and I didn't, go, I didn't go 50 yards, and he had laid down already, and it was red with blood. So I backed right out, and I called Mike Hines, the guy that runs Timber Ghost, and I said, I just hit that big deer, and I said, I don't think he's going anywhere, but 
He says, don't chase him. He says, I'll be out to get you. And he said, we'll, we'll look at it. So we go to where I, the deer had bedded. And he looked at that. And he said, oh, he said, that deer ain't going to go nowhere. But he said, let's leave him tonight. It's dark. He said, let's leave him. We'll get him in the morning. And Harold Torrey was with me. And he had shot a deer that day at another place of theirs. And so we all go back the next morning bright and early thinking, well, we're going to find this deer. We, they get on the track. I can't see blood. So I, I got off to the side in case he jumped up or something. And we went, and we went, we went till noon, from dark till noon. Finally, we ran out of blood. They ran out of blood. He says, I don't understand this at all. He said, all the blood that deer lost, he says, and he said, I'd have bet he wouldn't go nowhere. Mm. And he said, he now is... We don't know where he went. So I ended up going to another place and hunting, let's the, say, the, on their one of their farms. I went and I hunted another place, and I don't know if I shot one or not. I, I don't even know. But anyways, I get home, and about three <coughs> weeks later, he calls me, and he says, hey, he says, you know that deer that you shot, that big deer that you shot? I said, he's back in that same soybean field with them nine doe. I said, he's alive. He said, he's, he don't even show a sign of being hit. And he's back wow. there. There's a 12-point. I got a picture upstairs of him. No Anyways, so uh, he says, uh, he's, he's fine. Well, that next year comes, and, I, of course, I couldn't go back to Iowa because I didn't have any points. So another guy does the very same thing that I did to the same deer, <laughs> and he didn't get him either. And he lived again. Hmm. <laughs> So the third year, the third year, a guy shoots him, gets him. And I said to Mike, I said, do you know where the bullet holes were that when I shot and when this other guy shot? He said, yeah, we do. He said, both you guys hit him in the brisket. No kidding. And he said uh, he was fine. You never know it, but he said there were two bullet holes. You knew the bullets had gone in the brisket. 186. That's really? Dang. That's what he. Oh, I got man. a picture of it. It was a 12 point. Perfect 12 point. <clears throat> no oh, kidding. Oh, wow, times mm-hmm. are that long. They say some of those big ones, like, um, especially around like suburbs and whatnot. Like, I know you hear Seek One guys talk about it a little bit that some of those bucks that they shoot have been shot multiple times mm-hmm. before. Yeah. Well, this one here got shot twice, I know of. <laughs> and finally, yeah. the third time look, did him in. But yeah. look at the yeah. one up by us there this year. Uh, Which one? Uh, the one, that big one that the guy got right there by the house. Um, that had an arrow in him. Had an arrow in his back. That uh, Gabe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll, it had a, he'll, I mean, it had right a, in the back strap. Right in the backbone. Oh, in the backbone. Yeah, had a wow. broadhead stuck in there. Yeah, that yeah. great big one that yeah. Teddy Mayo killed up there a couple years ago in New Hampshire. That one seventy some odd. That that had a broadhead in it too. Mm. Yeah. That was a huge. Wow. Yeah. Huge typical. Mm. Huge typical. But yeah. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of big ones get. <clears throat> get I shot one when you were in New York, over in New York, with a arrow, and I knew I'd hit the deer, and I didn't get him. Mm. And and we went back for rifle hunting, and my brother-in-law shot shot the deer, and he called me and he says, "I I got a deer," he said, and uh, uh, so I said, "Well, leave him right there. I'll come over. I'll go get my four wheeler and I'll pull him out for you." So I get over to the deer. I look at that deer. That's the deer I <laughs> shot with my arrow, my my bow and arrow. Oh, he said, you didn't hit this one. He said, this one here was fine. When we opened him up, there was that much of the arrow in him. No kidding. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And he yep. was fine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Funny story. Yeah. Um, a buddy of mine, Matt, uh, shot a deer, I don't know, it was four or five years ago, same thing, with a with a, <clears throat> with a a bow. Yeah. Uh, deer got away from him, and he knew that the deer had took his arrow because yep. he only found part of it. Right. That's all I found. Well, feel. in New Hampshire, you have to have your name on your mm. on your fletching. You do? Mm-hmm. Yep. You have oh, to have I your name, your number, and whatnot oh. on your fletching. And uh, yeah. later that, I think it was like January or something, um, guy showed up on Matt's Matt's door and uh, said, hey, I got something that belongs to you. And uh, <laughs> That's that guy had killed the fletching. buck, and it was his fletching. It no was healed kidding. over in that deer. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. wow. Yep. That's that pretty is unbelievable. Yeah, pretty neat. Yeah. I guess yeah. so. Yeah, he'd killed it with a gun later that year. Wow. Son of a gun. Wow. Yep, pretty neat. They can take an awful <laughs> shot. They sure can. Yes, so they can. you guys hunted the north quite a bit before you started to experience the Midwest. Uh, New Brunswick, mm-hmm. northern Maine, 
Ontario. Out of those areas, what what did you Montana? What did you guys like the most? Did they all have their probably as far as myself? Um, I would say that Ontario was probably the most fun. Yeah, um, because there was there was so many deer, and I mean you could take a track and. I mean, there was one day, I remember we were in, uh, I think it was called Vermilion. Yep. He, we, there was a deer that had crossed the track, and me, he was driving. We had a buddy with us, Jerry, and um, this deer had crossed the track, and it was snowing like a sun, and they were calling for a terrible storm to come in. And I said, drop me off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow this deer. They draw, he and Jerry, they dropped me off, and I said, I'll see, you pick me up tonight or whatever. I mean, they had not gone 15 minutes. And that deer had just gone in, and I, I walked right onto him, and um, and that was a two hundred pound, that was an uh, eight point there. Okay. No walked right, uh, walked right onto him, and then we ended up uh, being stuck in the motel for three days. Yeah, that was because so it was a blizzard, and they yeah. couldn't they couldn't get the roads plowed. Couldn't even really? plow the roads. Yes. Wow. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah, and that I mean, but it was like that every year. I mean, yeah. The, the, how I met Joey's is sort of funny. I met Joey's father, I think, before I met Joey. I, I did too. <laughs> right, yeah, I that's where to, I met him up there. I wanted to get into that yeah. whole story. How you guys are all related here? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, tell a story. The f- uh, you want to you want to start with the first year that you uh, went with us? And- well, yeah, the first year, the first year, you know, that I, I guess I met you, but I didn't know you. You guys were up there, and that must have been 07 or something like that. And I believe the reason we went was because of you guys, right? Well, I think you went with Chip Percy. Yep. That was the, because yep, we all flew out, right? The we four all of us. flew out. Yep. 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 Alan, Chat. Yep. No. No. Me, Al, Chip, and I think Matt went. Yeah, Matt. Yep. 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 And that was the first year. Uh, and that was, that was, I mean, that was the first time I'd killed a 250 pound buck. Yeah. You know? Uh, They're there. Yeah. yeah for no, sure. No, no. It was, it was, it was, then, that was good. And then leading into that, um, we started hunting a different area, and I think that was oh nine, right? Yeah. Did you guys go oh eight? Oh yeah, we went. We went. We started we went going every, every year, year after. Um, yeah. We once we got up there. Yeah. And I oh, think it was. I think it was oh nine. Me and Jamie just started dating. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and Jamie is my wife. My, wa- my wife, his daughter. <laughs> my daughter. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yep. And. I don't know if I knew you were going or not going or yeah. what. I, d- I don't remember. I mean, we didn't know one another. We didn't really yeah. have any connection. Yeah, yeah. And we'd only been dating for a couple months yeah. or something like that. And yeah, we Wild all... Man was with me, and we were we were hunting a place. Um, Thought we were alone. Thought it was a hot spot that nobody would know about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, everybody knew about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, well, I'll let you. I wasn't there, yeah. but, but I mean, I, uh, that that was the like you said, probably two thousand nine. Um, we were on this road that you had to. It was gated, and the year before, I we were walking in, yeah, and got the idea that we're going to bring bicycles, yeah, and pedal bikes. There was no electric bikes back then, you know. Right, there was no right. such thing. Yep. And we got the we brought these old junk bikes. If the worst came to worst, you leave it, and yeah, and uh, I uh, I remember the first day there. I went back in and it was it was six miles in this ro- on this road yep. and yep. I had picked a spot on Google Earth that I was like this looks like the perfect spot mm-hmm. and it was probably a mile back in off from you the road. You set me up. Yeah, I had set you up there yeah. also in another spot there, and uh, I'd walked into this spot with my stand and I I mean I'm I'm getting to this spot right where I want to be and all of a sudden here comes this guy wearing a beagle jacket and I was like. How how is this possible? How is how did this guy get in here? And he's, I says, I know he's a Vermonter. I mean, it's yep, a, a beagle. Wear. Beagle. He comes over and he's and I was wearing a beagle jacket and he's yep. Vermont. I said, yeah, Vermont. And he goes, well, he says we're from Stowe. I said, well, I'm from Milton. I said, my my daughter just started dating a guy from Stowe. <laughs> she, he goes. Well, my 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 son just started dating a girl from Milton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh my gosh! I mean, and we're in the middle of the nowhere. Yeah, right. right. We 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 talk we talk for I don't know ten minutes or so, and I only had to go a little further. And I, I we leave and he we separate and sort of sort of funny story, and um, go to this point and get up where I want it to be. And I'm I'm put my I'm 
got my clamp on stand. I'm dragging it up the side tree, and it's making it's. It sounds like ha- antlers rattling. Yeah. And all of a sudden, here comes this buck. And it, I mean, it was a ten point. He come running in, and uh, bang! I I grabbed my gun. I went back down to the bottom of the tree, got my gun, shot it. He, his dad heard me, came back and helped me drag that deer all the way back to the road. Did so, some mine too. Yeah. Yeah. So. It yeah. was uh, yeah. it was a pretty interesting story. It about was. How we could meet that far away. Yeah, that is amazing. Oh, we yeah. got to take a battery break real quick. All right, we're back from the battery break. So you shot the buck right after you met after Joey's I ran into Joey's father. Yep. And uh, I mean, it, it was maybe within within like I said, fifteen twenty minutes of him leaving, and next thing you know, here he comes. He comes walking back, and uh, and uh, we uh, we actually got to spend the day together. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he helped. I mean, it is. It was so hard. We'd made these little carts to put behind the bike, and, <laughs> yeah. and oh yeah. my god, I remember yeah. bringing him out of there. And the, it, it, the, of course, they were bikes that the wheels were maybe an inch wide. Oh, yeah. these were like cheap. Bikes yeah. Back yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, they were cheap, all yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So I remember you. Bikes. I remember seeing you go down the road with one of your bucks, and Brent pushed you to get going yeah and once you got going down that hill you i couldn't stop i couldn't have stopped if nope. i wanted to nope. no but no. i couldn't go up the other side that was the problem yeah by the time yeah. we got back to the car which was like six mm. miles yeah there was nothing left of the bike nothing no. left of them wheels were slapping against like, the frame everything was shot we just threw it in the ditch and left it there yeah <laughs> and yeah, took the God. deer yeah uh, yeah that's yeah. funny. That was that a pretty, was, that pretty was good fun. place. That was a good. That was one of my favorite places, as you were asking was, about. Was, um, yeah. Those were the those were the days that we were we were spoiled. That we were at the time when there were so many deer up there and mm. um, great times. Yeah, it's a reoccurring yeah. and, theme. And, and Maine Maine had sort of disappeared at that time. You know, mm. we we had. I mean, I was everybody was going to Ontario. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everybody had stopped going to Maine and started showing up in Ontario. Everybody and, was following the Bloints. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were all out there, and everybody wherever they went, that had to have been good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, where so. they went, green plates followed. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, now you guys hunted Montana for a number of years, right? Thirteen. Yeah, yeah. and you guys hunted the big woods of yeah. yes, Montana, yeah. yes. the western western side of it. Yeah, from the northwestern area. Yeah, um, big all big woods. I mean, just. There ain't no small woods. There's out no there. small woods. No. No. Yeah. no, in the mountains were straight up or straight yeah. down. Right. Yeah. Um, but a lot of deer. I, I mean, before, and I, I think it was 2006 that they, 2007. No, two, probably yeah, 2006 time frame is when they had a a terrible winter. I mean, the year before, I'll never forget this. I, I, I had killed a deer. Um, I'd seen 374 deer in 10 days, and I killed the 75th buck that I'd seen. Oh my god! Really? Gosh. Yes. Wow, and, uh, and that's the way it was. I mean, I, I mean, you'd just you'd find a place where they were, the the white tails were on the bottoms, and the mule yep. deer were up top. No kidding. Really? And, and I mean, these these river bottoms were full of deer. Was and, there, was there cuts on these mountains or very little? I mean, yeah. there were some, some but, but not but not, not a lot. No, mm. not, not a lot. But the river bottoms were just. I mean, oh. they were open, and you could see forever. Mm. And I mean, you'd, uh, that's where I learned rattling. Yeah. I mean, you, you'd rattle and you'd have five bucks come. Yeah. Oh, before, you would... before you could put your horns down. Yeah. They'd really? Be, they'd they were be there. there that quick. I missed a deer, a beautiful deer, because I still was holding on to horns. <laughs> oh, my God. No kidding. I was still holding on to horns. He came that quick. Okay. So this brings back, you told me a story once. Uh, when you bought your license, the guy told you, if you're going <laughs> to rattle, mm-hmm. what did they, he tell they, you? Hey, well, that was probably about the second year we were there. He said, if you're going to rattle, you back yourself up to the biggest tree you can find because you're going to have mountain lions all over you. Wow. And, and uh, I was like, yeah, that's it's I never sort, experienced it's sort of funny. That, but... and, and I did. I did. I was, I was in this river bottom, and I would rattled. And, I mean, it was a fresh snow, so everything was covered. There was no tracks at all when I went in there. And I'd rattled, and I, I, I'd seen some bucks come in, but they were really spooky, and and they, I knew it wasn't it wasn't me that there's no way. And um, after an hour or so, I got up and I decided to take off, walk around the back of the tree, and there's a mountain lion track. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah he shit. came right up yeah. behind me. And while we were there, um, there was uh, there was I remember this on the guy telling us that a six year old girl had got taken. Oh. Out of their yard by a mountain lion. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So we that was uh, as close as I've ever come to a mountain lion. But we did. We had a buddy 
uh, from uh, Waitsfield that went with us. <laughs> yeah. And um, he, it, it was, it was sort of funny. He, he talked about it the whole trip out as we were flying out that didn't want to see no mountain lion. He was a hey, scared. I don't want to see a mountain lion. I'm scared to death of them things. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, it was, it was probably the first day. I mean, my father was driving. Hey, it was, yeah, it was yeah. early. We had radios. We had uh, our race car radios from the race cars, which would reach two, three miles, yeah. four miles in the mountains. Wow. From, from the village to where we were hunting was 30 miles back in. Yeah. No kidding. Every, every day, morning and night. Wow. 30 miles. And, the, the, and wow. these radios would work great. Oh, they worked they fine because you were so high. Yeah. And uh, I were, we, he was the first guy we dropped off. And I ended up being the second guy. And my dad and the other guy continued up the road. And, I mean, we hunted a couple hours. And all of a sudden, on the radio, I, I hear this. And he is huffing and puffing. And he's like, <laughs> you, you better get your ass down here. And I'm telling you, <laughs> be careful when you walk in. I just had one of the mountain lions attack me. I said, come on. Uh, come on, Dick. I said, there's no way. He said, I'm telling you, you be careful. So I gotta, I come down out of this out of this woods and just luck, just shit luck is all it was. I come out and I hit the road. And he's probably two miles, three miles down this road from me. And this lady and her husband were coming down through in an old pickup. And they said, where are you going? I said, I need to go down the road here a ways. And jump, I jumped in the back and j- drops me off. And, of course, I can pick up Dick's track. I start yep. walking in, <clears throat> went in there a ways, and all of a sudden I look up on this ledge, and there's Dick standing up on the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he gets on the radio. He says, right there. He says, right where you are is where I shot that thing. And I turn and look, and I was like, holy cow. There's, there's a mountain lion laying there dead. Really? Yeah, and it was it was within five feet of where he was standing. Holy shit! <laughs> and he didn't place it. So, <laughs> so, oh my! He, it, he, did he? Was he worried that it was uh, going to attack him? Yeah, or he was all crouched he, down, ready yeah, to jump. Yeah, he really? when he, he happened to see him, he he'd walk. He started walk by him. Yes, and he got that feeling that something was wrong and something was looking at him. And he was on a deer trail, which was a probably a little bit of a mistake to be <laughs> wow. and, and this cat was sort of above him a little bit and he, he said when um he knew something was wrong he turned and when he turned the cat was all crouched up like my yeah. father said oh my and gosh. he opened his mouth and screeched and oh when he he gosh. did he sh- he just turned and shot and it went right through the mouth and right out the belly of the cat <laughs> wow and yeah. he and you see his tracks were dick were, he ran <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he ran like a scared girl oh, yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so, man. so we're I, and you can't you can't shoot mountain lions yeah. out there. It's like, what are we gonna do now? We got him. We got a dead mountain lion. <laughs> oh, and you're supposed to have marks. I mean, that's what all the locals say. Make sure you got marks if you kill one. Right. Oh, but, but go ahead and kill them. They want everything with dead. They want them dead. Really. So we over the years, me and Dad had found these. We we met some of these Indians. He was an Indian taxidermist. Yeah, and uh, we called him up and said, hey. uh, it was it was sort of funny. We um we pulled him out that night and had him in a bag. <laughs> yeah. And we we threw him over the bank at a mile marker. Yeah. And that night we that's the first time and probably the only time we've ever been stopped in Montana by the wardens. No oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. We got we got yeah. stopped that night and you just ditched we just <laughs> just <laughs> <You got yeah. laughs> and uh, we're like uh, so we we head down and we go and find this uh, this taxidermist and said hey he was an can, Indian you can you you can have anything you want right yeah. Uh, so we we go down to the um, a reservation, meet this Indian taxidermist, and um, he says, uh, "You, we'll, I'll go get it." And he says, "I'll he mount a tag. A, I'll mount a cat for you, and if you want him." And, and uh, the dick says, "He says, let's. Uh, I'll take it." He says, "I want that cat." So <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah. that that night, the next day, we see the guy, and he'd gone and got the cat, and. We took we hunted the rest of the week. I mean, Dick took a couple of days off. I think. I yeah, didn't. I think he was scared to death. <laughs> yeah, he he, he didn't was. leave the motel for a couple of days, and then he got back into it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's it was it was uh, uh, it was scary. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't that. like it yeah. after I yeah. knew it was dead. Yeah. Um. So we uh, we we hunted and we saw it. We saw a lot of. Deer. I mean, you, you shot deer every year. I mean, oh. and some nice, beautiful yeah. deer. Yeah, you've uh, killed some nice ones. Yeah, there. long really nice. tines. You know, just really? that Montana deer. Yeah. Well. The, to tell the end of that story quick, um, yeah. Dick uh, calls me one day. I was I was selling trucks um, in uh, Mack trucks at the time, and he says, "Come on down." He says, "My cat's coming in by uh, a truck freight." And I said, "Oh, cool." He said, "I want to see it." 
So we get down there, and it's in this big crate, and we unload it. We put it in his, he has a nice game room, and we put it in there. And that night, he calls me up. He says, I don't have my cat no more. And I said, what do you mean? He says, after we left, he says, uh, he says, we went, I went back, you went to work, and he says, I went back down to the office, and he says, I left my boxer there, the dog. <laughs> dog bit the face right off his cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His, yeah, his, his $2,500 cat. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> right. Yeah. Didn't, la- didn't yeah. last 15 minutes at his house. Oh, yeah. No man. kidding. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but but the, it was those were the those were the times that I'll never forget. We we had so much fun out there, and yeah. it and was it was there was a lot of game. What um, and then and and then the, I, that year that I was telling you about, um, there was that we had a bad winter, um, and like they, like I said, I I believe it was two thousand six. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Me and him are the only two that went back because we were told that don't come back. The deer we lost eighty percent of our herd and. Um, and we're like, yeah, we we already had everything. We'd bought our t- tag, yeah. and mm-hmm. we were we went back, just me and him. Right. And we hunted for ten days. I don't th- I don't think I saw ten deer. Wow. Yeah. And you were we were when you were going through the woods and walking through the woods and stuff. You were finding deer six eight feet up in trees. The yep, the, the bones of skeletons where they got hung up. There was so much snow. They got hung up on the limbs when yep. it thawed. Yeah. And they couldn't get off them. Wow. Yeah, and you were you were finding deer. Yeah, there was it was awful. It was everywhere. Dang. The first year I ever went out there uh, was long before that. But my brother and I and Mike Berry, we decided we wanted to go to Montana. Didn't know nothing about Montana, but decided we wanted to go out there and we wanted to do our own thing. So we just picked a name in one of the books of an outfitter that lived in Montana, <laughs> and we called him. And we said, uh, is there any way that you could, we could meet you somewheres and you could take us and put us in a spike camp back in the mountains and leave us with a cook and we do our own thing? This is the very first time now. And he says, yeah. He says, I got a place. He says, uh, uh, he says uh, I'll pick you up. He says, I'll pick you up at, by the airport. I'll drive you to this place. You're going to be back in 30 miles. And he says, uh, when we get in there, he said, you're going to you're gonna be in a spike camp. And he said, there's going to be a, a cook there, a kid that cook, does the cooking. That's all he's going to do. And you're going to be on your own. And you have the whole mountain range to yourself. That's what we want. We had no idea what we were doing. But anyway, we did that. We get in there, and I, I was scared to death from the time we left the village. You're going up this mountain, and you're going around these bluffs. And it's straight down for 2,500 feet. And it's snowing, and his tires on his blazer were bald. And I said, <laughs> oh, Jesus, we ain't never going to make it. I was scared to death. We finally got to the spike camp, and he says, it's down over the bank right here by the brook. So, okay, so we get down there, and I'd never been in a spike camp before or anything like that, and it was nice. It really was nice. It was nice and warm, hay on the floor. Then they had another camp over here for to eat out of, and out back was a corral for a donkey. And uh, so so he let, we get in there about 1030 at night, snowing like a son of a gun, and I had no idea where the hell I was. And... I knew I just wanted to get out of that thing. I didn't want to go over the bank. But anyways, we get down to the camp, and we get in the camp, and he says, before we go to bed, he said, I'm going to draw you guys some maps of what this territory looks like. So that would be a good idea. So he said, the road that we come up on, he said, it only goes two more miles, and it's dead end. There's no more road. And he said, you're going to be almost to the top of the mountain. Up there, he says, you're going to find elk. You're going to find moose. He says, Halfway down, you're going to find mule deer. And he says, down here by the river, you're going to find whitetails. I said, before I go anywhere tomorrow morning, I'm going to see the sun come up and figure this place out. <laughs> yeah, he said, that's okay. So next morning we get up, we have our breakfast with a guy. And I said, I'm going to go to the top of the mountain. Bobby says, well, I'm going down by the brook. And Mike Berry says, well, I'm going halfway up for the mule deer. So, okay, so we all went different directions. And that night, it had snowed probably that much, but it's 
the snow isn't like ours. It's, it's a dry, dry snow, and there's nothing to it. So I walk the two miles up to the end of the road, and I get up there. I get way to the top of the, way to the end of the road where there is no more road, and quite a lot more snow up there. Well, anyways, I'm standing there at the end of the road kind of looking up on this ridge up above me, and there's a noise coming off me. I never heard this noise in my life. What the heck is that? And it kept making this noise, making this noise, and I, I, I couldn't see it. I'm scoping with my scope and looking, and finally I went over underneath a big spruce tree, and of course it was all bent right over with snow, and I get under that tree and I'm still scoping, and all of a sudden I come to a cow moose, a cow elk. Whoa, there, there's the noise right there. So she's looking right in my direction, and she's a long ways away. She's 500 yards away. I don't know, 400. I don't know what it was. Long ways. Anyways, next thing I know, there's two. Then there's three. Then there's five. Ended up being nine. Wow. And the last one to stand up, I had a tag to shoot an elk if it had horns, any horns back then. Well, this guy had spikes about that long, the last one. I look at that. There's an elk right there, and I can shoot him or shoot at him. I didn't think I was ever going to hit him. I had a 30 out 6 pump. And so I aimed the best I could, and I shot. It. I saw him flinch. He just stood there. Whoa. So I had to hit him. I pumped it. Boom. And I ended up shooting five times, and the, I shot four, and he still stood there. He never moved. And I said, Jesus, I, I know I hit him the first time, but why don't he move? So finally, I, I said, I'm going to go just above him. I went just above him a little bit, like I pulled the trigger and dropped him right there. I said, I got an elk the first morning. <laughs> so it took me 20 minutes to go down through all the snow and, and then go back up that hill. And when I got up to him where he was laying, the other eight were still going up the hill, all cows. They were going up ahead of me and i get up there and jesus now what am i gonna do <laughs> so uh i said maybe i can move him well i couldn't move him here at that wall so i said i gotta do something so i said i'll go back to the camp i'll go back to the camp and we'll we got the there's a vehicle down there we can drive that up it's four-wheel drive but when i left this morning i saw a donkey in the corral out back. And I didn't know anything about donkeys. And come to find out, he was a pack donkey to take packs, stuff up to hunters. So I get back to the camp about noon. When I get back there, and the kid says, uh, what are you doing back here the first day of hunting season? I said, well, I said, I shot an elk. No, he said, he didn't shoot no elk. I said, I shot an elk. No, I, he wouldn't believe me. I said, well, I'm trying to tell you that I did, and I need some help. <laughs> and he, he says, he said, well, what are we going to do? And I'm, Jesus, I don't know. <laughs> I said, I said, does that donkey, does he work out by? I mean, does he really? He said he'll put stuff on his back, and they take it up for other hunters. But I said, could we put a saddle on him? Could we put a saddle on that donkey and, and then hook a rope to the saddle and have him pull that? pull that elk to the road, it's probably going to be 400 yards, 300 yards. And he says, I don't know if he'd pull it or not. He says, we can try it. So we, the first mistake was trying to put the saddle on the donkey. I thought he was going to kill, I thought he was going to kill both of us. Bite and kick. Oh my God. We ended up knocking him down and hold on. on. We roped his legs up and put the saddle on him that way. We let him wow. up, and he. We hooked him to the trailer <laughs> ball of the the, the four wheel drive that was there, and we drove up the two miles up through into the snow, and he followed us right up through. Walked him over to the elk, hooked him on. He walked right back with that elk, just like nothing. So we dragged, we dragged him all the way down through in the snow, and we get to the camp, and. We dragged him down over the bank, and we couldn't pick him up. We had no way of picking him up. We hoisted him up the best we could, but he wasn't off the ground next to the donkey. And 
so we left him. We said, tomorrow we'll take him down to the, down to have him butchered tomorrow. So that night, we're in the camp, and the donkey's going crazy out there. He's whinnying and hollering, and nobody, not a one of us would get up to go see why. So the next morning, I says to the cook, I said, what the hell was the matter with that donkey out there last night? He said, I don't know. He's never done that before. So we go out. A cougar had followed the blood trail mm. all the way down to where we took him down over the bank to the, to the corral. And that's as far as he came. He wouldn't, he wouldn't come down. Of course, the donkey knew he was there, and he kept mm. winning. Mm. No kidding. So he said, we got to get him out of here today. And we did. We took him out of there today, but the cat never did come back. No kidding. But uh, <clears throat> that was quite an experience. No, but, I bet it was. Oh, it, so we're sitting here. You, you've got a cat right here. I have a cat. I shot that one in Idaho, oh, about eight years ago, I guess it was. Uh, what was what was that like? Well, it's the hard, it was the hardest hunt I've ever been on in my life. Uh, it took us eight days to get this cat. This cat. Uh, I went out with this, this guy out there hunting, and first thing we did, we went back into the canyons with a snowmobile on snow, and you look for cat tracks. Well, we found where something had been killed and dragged into a hole. Well, come to find out, it was a cow elk, and this cat had killed it. And they, the first thing you do, they'll drag them to a hole, put them in the hole, and then they'll go feed on them after. So we found where the, where the elk was. So we go down there, and of course, there's all these cat tracks. So he says, boy, here's per this is perfect. So we go back and get the dogs. Put the dogs on the track and over the mountain they go. And that night, he his dogs were, he could call his dogs back. I could not believe that. But they'd run all day at about 3 o'clock if he wanted to stop. He'd call them and they'd come back. i have wow. never seen that in my life. Well, anyways, so we they went over the mountain that night, got the dogs back. Next morning, we went and ran them again. Uh they went across a couple mountain ridges, come back, and uh, the cat went up a tree. And I was sitting back in the canyon in the truck, because he said, you ain't going to be able to walk here. I couldn't even walk on the level, because we were at 7,500 feet, and I couldn't breathe. I wasn't used to the altitude. Mm. And he was up higher than that. So anyways... He said, you stay here in the truck with the radio. And he says, I'll, uh, if we get something, he says, where you can get it, he says, I'll call you. Well, I could hear the dogs barking, you know, when they'd go by or whatever. And finally, he calls and he says, uh, can you hear the dogs barking? I said, yes, I can. I said, they're, they're way up on top of the mountain up there. Yeah. He says, I'm with them. And he says, we have a cat. We have that cat up a tree. And he says, can you get here? I said, yeah, I can. I probably can get there, but it's going to take me a while. Yeah, he says, it's going to take you three hours to get up there. <laughs> I said, yeah, I can believe that. Well, it probably took me at least three hours. And I got up there, and the cat's in the tree. And I'm coming up the side hill, and I can see the one lone tree the cat's in. And the, the dogs are right there at the bottom standing up, you know, against the tree. And... I can see the cat, and I'm still a little ways from him. And he said, come right up to where I am. And he was by the tree. So I get almost up to, I get within 75 feet of the tree, and the cat jumps out. And there he goes with the dogs. <laughs> and I couldn't shoot, and he's gone. Well, that was the end of that day. Well, he gets the dog back. We do the same thing. Two days later, we do the same thing again. And I didn't get him that time. He jumped again. And finally, the eighth day, the eighth day, he went up a tree and he stayed in it. And I got there. I got to the tree. He was under the tree. One of his dogs was halfway up the tree. It's a good dog. <laughs> he, he, he was halfway up. the. He, was, he wasn't four feet below the cat. Wow. And the cat would look down at him like that, and then he'd look over at me. And I wasn't the length of this room from, from the cat. I was right, the, the tree standing here, and the, and the hill went up like that. So I, I come by him, so I was right perfectly level. 
And I said, I can shoot him right here. No, don't you shoot him, he says, until I tell you. I got to get them dogs out of that tree. He want one dog out of the tree. And he said, I got to get the others away because if you wound him, he's going to grab my dogs. And I said, okay, well, you tell me when. He got the dogs away. The one that was in the tree started down, and he fell, and he caught him. <laughs> and he took him over to some bushes, tied him up, and Finally, he started back, and he got just low from the tree, and he says, okay, shoot him. Bang, I shot him. I wasn't, I want the length of this room. No kidding. And I shot him right through the heart yeah. with a 7 mm 8 and the bullet never went through that cat. Wow. We how, found. How big a cat is it? What do you weigh? About 110 pounds. It, yeah. it ain't a big cat. It's yeah. a smaller mm -hmm. cat. Yeah. But he had killed that elk, and in the third day into the, into the chasing, he killed a buck mule deer. The same really? cat. Huh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but I'll tell you, that was a hard hunt. Yeah. Huh. No, it's rugged country, too. That they it live is. In. It yeah. is. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. yeah. You guys think we got mountain lions back east? Of course we do. You think so? Of course. Of course we do. There's a guy sitting in this room right now that recently saw a photo of one. We won't say where. I could. I can show you some photos of some right here, right, really? close, <laughs> right close here. Really? I've seen them myself. Yeah. I told him he was full of shit, but he swears to God it was no, I, 100%. There is. There he's talk, is. He's Believe talking, me. He's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a there photo is. the other day. You did? saw a photo the yeah, other day. I did. Yeah. Wow. And Game uh, camera picture? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The guy brought it, and, and it ended up on two or three other guys' neighbors. There's, on their one, cameras. there's one right over here. Legitimate. Oh, yeah. camera photo. Absolutely. Of this Absolutely. Thing yeah. As England? real as real yes. can be. Yes. 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 Beauty. I mean, bigger than what I want to see <laughs> in this yeah, area. Right. They, in this they, area, too. I don't you'd think they're going to bother you. I really I'm not worried. Don't. I don't think they're going to bother us, but I think they're going to take deer. Oh, oh of, yeah. course they're going. of course they're going. Yeah, of course they are. They're going to eat whatever they. Can. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah, they mm. are. Yeah, don't really need them in the area. No, no. no. We've got enough bears. Uh, well, <laughs> we've got right? more bears. We hunters, think we got. hunters, <laughs> bears, and coyotes. It's funny. I think if a lot of guys in this area saw. A cougar track, it'd probably mix it up with a bear track, right? Because yes. they're kind of similar. Yeah, they're not. In size. They're not all that far off in size. No, I mean, they, in the, especially in the <clears throat> snow. In the right. snow, they look. I'll tell I you so. something else. We got we got wolves. You think so? Yes, I know so because I saw one. Really? Yeah. Yes, I did. I saw it up on that on uh, on uh, Lake Carmoy. Really? Well, they killed one up there a while back. That was this was. That was like, confirmed. To have is that up? This was near like Canada? two years yep. ago. Wow. Well, hmm. Me and my wife were going up to the gun shop, <clears throat> and I looked out on Lake Carmi. It was all frozen and everything, and there was this wolf. I thought, I said, boy, that's an awful big coyote. Yeah. She says, that ain't a coyote. And I said, no, I don't think it is. It was a coal black. And he, I mm. blowed the horn, tried to get him to stop, and he wouldn't. He kept right on going. He went right across the lake walking. Yeah. So I go on to the I go on to the gun shop, and I'm talking with the owner. I said, you can't guess what I just saw down on, on the pond. Yes, I can. He said, you saw a wolf. I said, how'd you know that? He says, I've seen him. He said, he's come down from Canada. Of course, they're on the Canadian yeah. border. Right. And he yep. says, but right. I never heard anybody. I don't know if anybody ever killed him. I probably can't. I guess you probably can anyways. But, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, what would they say? I mean, uh, if it's. Yeah. 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 thought it was a yeah. coyote, coyote, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. If they're not supposed to be here, I'm not sure I'd say anything anyways. <laughs> no, I mean, got a world record coyote, guys. <laughs> yeah. 140 pound coyote. Go, yeah. <laughs> Go get him mounted might yeah. be a problem. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. So out of the 75 deer heads that are in this room, Beef, what one stands out to you the most? I guess I would say that Saskatchewan one right there. Yep. Uh, mm. I shot that in Saskatchewan, and it, it uh, grosses 181, and uh, that was a nice deer, but <laughs> I, I've seen some a lot better than that, and like I told you, I missed that one that was way bigger than that one, but I, I like that deer there, but we've got some other deer in here that, this one right that. here, Brent, Brent saw this deer, this is a New York deer. It was Adirondacks. Shot, it was Adirondacks. The, Adirondacks. Yeah. He saw that deer the day before I ended up getting him, and we were trying to push it to him. 
And that was the second biggest deer in, shot in New York that year. It was in 1985. It dressed 237, and a guy from a guy from <laughs> beat me with one 245. No kidding. But that was a nice mm. buck. That yeah, that's. A you want to tell the story, like the whole, the whole story well, on that buck? Well, he will tell you tell? better. I mean, how was how it all started was. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we were over there. We had we were in a camp yep. um, with a, c- a bunch of guys from New York. Actually, yep. they'd asked us into camp and be a member with them. And um, big, it was a pretty big uh, hill or mountain over there. Um, and we had snow. Always had snow in that area. Um, I remember getting into the uh, getting into the woods that morning and found this track. I mean, and like I said, it was something that I started to really enjoy doing. Yep. Um, took the track and went, uh, I mean, all day. And next thing I know, I ended up on the top of this mountain and he, he got away from me through these ledges and went straight down. And it was, it was late in the day. And it was like, and, and I saw him, I saw him the last thing, just as he went over the hill. And I knew he was, I knew he was a big deer mm. and, um, came back to camp and I was, I was telling my dad, we, we were, I pulled him aside. I remember it was plain as day. I says, you ain't gonna believe the deer I saw today. I said this this is a this is a real New York deer. I mean, we we it was. I said I can't imagine he's he wasn't being pushed that hard. I said we'll try it again. So uh, I told him where this deer had went through these ledges, and he was gonna go over and come in that direction, and I was gonna go up the direction that I'd gone the day before. Right. And sure enough, I walked onto that deer again. And I, I never saw him. I, I saw the track. Yep. And I started following it, and I knew we were getting close. We I was getting close to the peak, and I knew yep. that he had to be very close. And, I mean, at the uh, I, I mean it might have been 10 o'clock in the morning or something. Just about. Just about. Just about and, 10 o'clock. Maybe. I don't even know if it was that early. Yeah. That, I mean, it might have been. And I, I heard yeah. the I heard the shot, and yep. I, then it was that close. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to come running back to me. Yep. Never saw him. in yep. uh and then that's where he should t- tell you a little story of how the deer, where he ended up. I mean, we had a, we sort of had him pinned in. Is well, what happened. He was, yeah. I picked the track up. He told me where the track was. I found the track, and I and he was going to go up the side of this mountain, and we're up the side of the mountain, and up on the top, it, it was all kind of leveled off, but he couldn't go over the other side because it was sheer ledge, and he was up. He went up around to be up there when I drove him up. Well. I'm I'm going up and I'm holding on to the trees. It's that steep to get up, and I I look up like that, and he's standing up there like that, looking down, and I can't see no horns on him, and I can see this deer, but I, he's looking down and he's not moving a muscle, and all of a sudden he moves his head and it looked like the whole tree, <laughs> uh, like a tree moved. I, holy Jesus! I guess he's got horns. <laughs> so. I'm I'm down on the side of the mountain and I'm aiming just like this, and I aim for the white patch and that's right where I hit. No kidding. And I didn't know if I hit him or not, but he went over apparently backwards. Yep. And I called him and I said that deer should be running right to you if you're up on top. Yeah, on on top. Right. And a little while later, I said, did he come through? No, he said he didn't come through. So I I kept going the way I was. He didn't go. He, mm-hmm. he just went over backwards, right there. and he was dead. Wow! Yeah. And then we dragged. And we dragged for like five hours. Nice. Oh my God! Yeah. I didn't think we were ever going to get him out of there. No, <laughs> that's a good one. That was a good New York deer. For it was sure. a nice yeah. deer. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful rack on him too. For yeah, yeah for our eight pointer, that was a nice day. He scores one thirty, one thirty eight. That's yeah. what it scores. It's yep. a giant. And the other one side of it was the Saskatchewan, and that scores one forty two. Yep. Yep. That's it, huh? Yep. That's Man, all. That thing looks Eight bigger. Pointer. Yep. That's because he carries yeah. through his tines. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Deceiving. Yep. That's where you need like a water displacement mm. measurement system, yeah. you know, right? Just mm. to, yeah. Have you ever heard Make of that? Up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. have like a big thing. Yeah, yep. big water and yep. put it in and see how much it takes. Exactly. And, yeah. Because he, mm. he'd score real well. Oh, be way ahead of the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No comparison. Yeah, mm. he's good. I mean, his G2s and G3s are probably like almost three inches all the way through. Yeah. They are. Awesome. That eight, that mainframe eight point right there, <laughs> that came out of that came out of Iowa, and that scores one sixty two. Yeah, it's a beauty. And it's a mainframe eight point, basically. Mm-hmm. It's a big one. 
Yeah, it was a nice deer. They had seen him three years in a row, and ne- they had him on camera for three years in a row and never saw him alive once on their food plots. And the very first time I went there, he walked right to me, hmm. and I got him. So as good of a race car driver as you were and as <laughs> well known as you are within the racing community, and correct me if I'm wrong, how many Hall of Fame you're in the Vermont Hall of Fame? Vermont, I'm in five please. Hall of Fames. Five Hall of Fames. Yeah. And how, how does racing compare to hunting? It don't. <laughs> it don't? <laughs> it don't. I mean, I thought it did back. You know, I raced for 42 years. I drove a race car for 42 years. And I had to race against my brother for 40. And that was the hardest thing we ever did because neither one of us would let each other win. We'd end up over the bank, both of us, every, every night. Yeah. And But then Brent got into it, and it was quite a lot more fun then, but I, I was getting to the end of my career. I'd done it so long, and it, I, had a, I had a lot of – Good days, and I had a lot of bad days. Uh, I won a lot of races. I won a lot of championships. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I raced at Daytona. I raced at Dover, Delaware. I raced at Martinsville, Virginia, all them places. And I know some of the big-name guys like Richard Petty. I yeah. raced against Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. Uh, and that didn't do nothing for me, but... Uh, we could beat them when they come up here. We could beat them, but we couldn't beat them down there because they cheated too much. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. So when they came up here, were you cheating too much? Or we cheated a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we cheated a lot. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, it was fun. I, you know, I had some good days and I had some bad days. But uh, hmm. I did have, you know, I won a lot of lot of championships and a lot of races. But Brent won just as many for the as long as he was in yeah. it. I yeah. did it only thirty years. Only 30 years. <laughs> yeah, 30 years. Yeah. 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 Well, the yeah. last name is nef- definitely known within well, the racing community. Well, that was fun. You know, and I met a lot of nice people along the way. We raced from one end of the country to the other. Everywhere mm. in Canada, mm. we could race. Uh, all up and down the eastern seaboard, uh, we raced. And I don't think there's too many racetracks we've missed. But well, it, sure. was, it was fun doing it. I remember one of the first times I met you, you said uh, you'd get rid of all your trophies, which... <laughs> I don't think I've seen your trophy room, but I can understand how many you got. I have about 500 of them. You told me that you'd get rid of every single one of those trophies for one more good deer hunt. I would. Mm-hmm. I would. That's that says cool. something. I would. Yep. Yeah, I'd rather have the deer hunting. And I don't even look at my trophies. Yep. He's giving his away, and I'm going to start giving mine away. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's true. You know, it is. It's, yeah. it's true. It's it's funny. I remember when I was racing, I mean, I'm very competitive. I don't like to lose. Um, and, I, and, I, I think, and I really got into the deer hunting stuff. And I remember him always saying that, that I'll, uh, I'd give up every, every trophy I had. And I was like, man, I, and I was racing. And I mean, you, I mean, you were working every night. You're out there till midnight and gone every weekend, yeah. traveling and racing two, three times a week. And I raced and, five nights a week. And back in the day, he, yeah. like he said, he was, and, uh, I remember as like, yeah, I don't, I don't see that. But the older I got and the more into the hunting I got, it was like, it was, it was, he's a hundred percent right. Yeah. Huh. And, and I mean, I moved to the Northeast kingdom here, uh, a year ago and had 400 trophies and I kept maybe, I might've kept 20 of them from championships or the milk bowl, all these big races that yeah. I won. Those are the only trophies I kept. The rest of them ended up in a dumpster. No kidding. I mean, yeah. there's, I mean. They're they're nice, but they take up a lot of space. You do, yeah. yeah. And I'm just gonna hand them down to Joey and Jamie, and they're gonna throw them out anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cash is gonna melt them. Cash, in gold. yeah, right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. So, but yeah. he's 100 percent right. I I saw that after 25 years of racing, 20 years of racing. I I I couldn't wait for. I mean, it killed me when we were racing in October. Mm. And oh, everybody man. else, yeah, me too. And I'm, everybody else, uh, October first, we're racing to the milk bowl, and everybody else is bow hunting. Yeah, yeah. I know. And it's like, ah, oh, that... it's like an October wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, Jeez, Ex- exactly. Terrible. Now, so I gotta ask you, your name. This got to be one of the best names I ever heard. <laughs> Beaver well, Dragon. When I was when I was 
uh, about 15 years old, 14 years old, whatever, I worked in a garage out in the town of Milton where I grew up. Yeah. I worked for this fellow that sold cars, and he had a gas station, and greased cars, changed tires, whatever. I did that after school. And one night, I was polishing a car. I think I was polishing one of his used cars or something. And his wife came downstairs, and she looked at me, and she said, you work like a little beaver. And her husband heard her say that. And he says, you know, he said, I ought to call him beaver. And it did, and it stuck ever since. Nobody knows me by my real name. <laughs> and uh, uh, But I've had that for, well, 80 years. Beaver dragon's <laughs> very cool. Yeah. 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 You don't forget I've had it. more no. people ask me <laughs> yeah. about that. Did yeah. you ever have like a half beaver, beaver half dragon on your race car? <laughs> oh, we've had a lot of different stuff on our <laughs> race car. Like a beaver <laughs> we've dragon. had some stuff on that I can't even tell you about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. But, cool. Well, but I also we, think that was what helped him with racing and me with racing yeah. was the name everybody remembered all the guys oh, from yeah. the south i mean when Dragon, when they yeah. came up here like the harvick or the wallace or mm-hmm. wallaces or whatever they they had no problem talking to us because they knew him and and that, and that Walsh, it just made it Richard easy for us Petty and all them guys they knew who i was right off i said they don't know who i am and they, they knew who i was and, and i know them better than i know you no <laughs> kidding yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and they don't forget mm. but uh I, I raced in Nashville, Tennessee one time. We went down to a race down there, and I Daryl Waltrip lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and I hated Daryl. Oh, I just didn't <laughs> like him at all. Who do I get parked side up for four days? Daryl Waltrip. Oh, I said, it's going to be a long four days. Well, when I came away from there, I'll tell you, he won the race that day because he cheated like a son of a gun but that <laughs> beside the point I and mean, when i came away from there he had helped me so much i learned a lot from him mm. i learned how to cheat some yeah. some <laughs> but i he 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 knew he wasn't gonna get beat by me i yeah. you know we didn't we didn't mount to nothing down there but we had fun going down and trying yeah that's awesome and, uh, yeah mm. yep good days mm. well we probably should wrap it up um yep. You've got a book, Beef. What is what is the book? The book is well, it was a book on my life uh, of racing. I, I like I said, I raced forty two years, and the name of the book is "To Beat the Beaver," and there's some hunting stuff in there too. And uh, it took us five years to write the book, which I didn't think it was going to take a week, but <laughs> it took us five years because we had so much to write in the book and and a lot of money. Yeah. And anyways, uh, uh, that book, uh, I've just about sold about all I've got. I do have a few more, but, uh, anyways, it was fun doing it. I met a lot of nice people and, uh, you know, if I had to do it over again, I'd know some shortcuts this time, There you go. but it takes a lot of money to but write a book. I think you should, uh, maybe write a book about some deer hunting. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. I could, I could, but. No, I, I don't. I'd rather go after him. <laughs> the, the one thing that got the book done is we had talked about earlier his tree stand, the tree stand deal. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I ought to tell you about that. Yeah. I, I, raced it, I raced it Thunder Road on a Sunday, on a weekend, it was on a Sunday. Monday morning, I said, when I get home, when I get home Monday, I said, I'm going to go up by Brent's house. There was a tree up there that I had put my tree stand in quite a few years and I'm going to put my tree stand up and have it ready for October for bow hunting and stuff. So I didn't say anything to anybody Monday morning. I got on my four-wheeler, took my tree stand. It was a lock-on stand. I climbed up this old cedar tree, and I got up 25 feet in the top of it. And I reached for a limb on the back side to kind of pull myself up, and the limb broke off. And I went right out of the tree backwards. And the stand went in the wrong direction. I went the other. And I ended up landing on the back of my neck on a ledge. Oh. And it broke my neck right off in four places. Four places my neck was broke off. My head here was down inside my shoulders. Oh. Broke both shoulders, and it broke my back in two places. And I laid there on the ground, and something kept telling me, 
go to Brent's house. Go to Brent's house. And I said, I can't go to Brent's house. There ain't nobody there. They're working. So I don't know how long I laid there, but nothing hurt because I was in shock. And not a thing hurt. So finally I said, I got to get up. I got to go home. So I got up. I walked back through the woods, got on my four-wheeler, and rode it back down here. Got off of it, went into the kitchen, and my wife had gone bowling. And so I called Brent at work down at Mac, and I said, I just fell out of that tree that I hunt up by your hill. I just fell out of it. And he says, are you all right? And I said, I think something's wrong, but I don't think much. I'll call an ambulance, and I'll be right home. So I just stood there, and when the scanner went off of the ambulance, the town clerk, John Cushion, he's one of my best friends, he heard it go off, and he left immediately and came right out here. He walked through the kitchen door, and I'm standing here with my arm on the table like that, and my head right here is down here. And his face just went, Bwah. And I, Jesus, I look that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he says, can you sit down? And I said, yeah, sit down. He says, sit. I want you to sit down. I said, okay. Well, in come the cops, in come the ambulance, in come Brent. And they went right for my neck. With They, they put one of them blanket or collars. collars on my neck. And he said, we're going to take you to the hospital. And I said, I don't think I need to go to the <laughs> hospital you need to go to the hospital. <laughs> so we go to the hospital, get down there, and they wheel me in, of course, and they put me under, and I don't remember nothing. That afternoon, I woke up in a room, and I'm laying in this bed, and the doctor comes in. I didn't know him, and he says, hey, he says, I'm going to be your doctor. And he said, uh, I need to ask you some questions about how you did this. He says, I've heard some stories, but he says, I want to hear it from you. So I told him just what I just told you. He said, you are so lucky. I said, what do you mean I'm lucky? He said, uh, one little tiny bone spur, and you're paralyzed for life. He wow. said, you did everything you could do to get one, and he says, you don't have one. I said, well, wait a minute. I said, why don't you just tell me what is wrong with me? I said, nobody has told me what's wrong with me yet, and I, nobody's working on me. He said, I'll tell you what's wrong with you. He said, your neck is broke off in four places, and your head is way down inside your shoulders. Both shoulders are broke, and your back is broke in two places. And I, I said, I don't believe that. He said, well, you better, because he says it's true. I said, okay, if that's the case, why aren't you working on me? I'm going to tomorrow morning, he said. I'm going to put your neck back together tomorrow morning. Well, they did. Seven hours later, they had my neck back together. I have two 10-inch rods in my neck holding my neck together Dang. right now. And I've never had a problem turning my head or anything with them. Wow. And another thing, it was, it was getting time to go to Kansas deer hunting. And I had we had already applied... For Kansas, I had my license, had my airplane tickets, and when this happened, the guys called me and they said, uh, "What are you going to do now?" I said, "Well, I'm going to give my license. I gave my license to somebody. I said, you take it.' I said, "I, I'm not going to go. I can't go," and I canceled my airplane tickets. So the doctor says, "I want to see you in seven weeks." Well, seven weeks, Kansas's deer season was still going, so. The guys uh, in ours was just starting here. So seven weeks, I went back to the doctor, and he says to me, he says, uh, uh, I got to look at you. I'm going to x-ray you today to see how you're doing. And he did, and he says, I cannot believe how you have healed up. He says, you're 50% healed up already. And he says, I'm going to take your collar away from you today. And he says, you're on your own. You can do whatever you wanted to do don't want to do. I said, can I go deer hunting? He says, yes, you can. He said, you can go tomorrow morning. And, and deer hunting was on here. I come right home. I'm, of course, the old lady didn't want to hear that. She didn't want to hear that I was going deer hunting. No tree stands. <laughs> so, so I got my guns out, and I left the house right here. I went up by his house, and I went till noon. 
but I couldn't hold my head up because that collar had been on there for seven weeks. Mm. And oh, my head kept falling down. I didn't have any strength. I didn't have any muscles. So I give up that afternoon. I gave up, and I didn't get a deer. So the guys called, and they said, what did the doctor tell you? I said, he told me that I could go deer hunting. He said, you want to go back to, you want to go to Kansas? I said, I don't have a license. He said, we'll get you a license. He said, we'll get a license for you. I said, he said, you just get the airplane ticket. I said, okay. So I got the airplane ticket. They got me a license, and I went. Get out there. I shot a 10-pointer. <laughs> I shot a 10-pointer, and we had about four inches of snow that night. I shot the deer down in the hollow, and I'm going down to get the deer, see the deer after I shot it, and there's a stump sticking up about that high, and I tripped on the stump, and I was going down. I knew I was going down, so I held my gun up so I wouldn't mm. <laughs> I didn't want to hit my scope, mm. and it broke my shoulders wide open again. Oh, my gosh. And, Mr. Boy, that hurt that time. Oh, man. We stayed there three days, and then we all came home, and I went back to the doctors, and they reset them. Mm. Oh, holy smokes, But beef. I got my deer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No kidding. And that yeah. was quite an ordeal. I mean, from then on, I've used a, a, yeah. a harness. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's when, and that's when the book was written. That's, that's yeah. when, when he was, was when he was laid up here. Yeah. The, yeah. the guy, the author of the book um, that helped write it with him um, was Bill coming here. Bush. Came nightly. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Every Tuesday night. Yeah. We'd write for, we'd wait every Tuesday night. We'd come up and... Yeah. We'd, we tried to start out from, I started racing in 1955, and we tried to go from 55 to 56, 57, all the way up through. Wow. But the only problem we had was a lot of the guys I raced with had passed away. Mm. And you just can't put their pictures in that book mm -hmm. unless you talk to their, their the widows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They have to give you permission, and it oh. takes time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And money. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have any more of those books left? I do have a couple of them books okay. left. Yes, good, I do. Good to know. In case yeah. people Yeah. People want I them. have a few left and uh but uh I got rid of most of them. I had I think we had twenty five hundred, three thousand, whatever it was. Yeah. And nice. Yeah. Good. Well, I think we should probably wrap it up. It's been yeah, a good it's one. It's been a great one. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks guys. Good, for thanks coming thanks, on. thanks awesome. for having us. Thank was, you uh, for having us. Yeah. Good time. I mean for it was fun doing what we did, and I'm not going to quit yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yep. So. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Yep.